Hey everybody, it's Jeremy, and uh, yeah, I'm full screen, which is odd, uh, but there's a good reason for it. So today, we're going to talk about a couple of things, uh, mainly Dragon Ball Super related today. So, uh, Gen Con is coming up in September, and I registered for one of the regionals um, in that uh, in that in uh, during Gen Con. First of all, I'm super excited to get back to doing conventions anyways and i'm super super excited to finally go play other people outside of my play group in another state just to mingle with people uh so i'm excited about that but uh i wanted to start a series especially before i think friday is uh the ban list so i wanted to get out my first uh deck idea for the regional uh before the ban list of course you know there'll be multiple decks that i'm looking at and this is just going to be kind of like my journey to uh, building a deck and find what works. Um, I, and I don't care. People know what my decks are. I don't I don't care. I, I just enjoy the game. Um, so I'm excited to kind of start getting back into that and talking to uh, the community about it and having fun with it. So uh, let's go ahead. And I know it's just, I know it's not super cool editing, but that's, that's just what we're doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up uh, my deck idea. The first one here. So, hopefully it's not blocking out anything here, but this is my first rough draft of uh, Mecha Frieza that I'm looking at. Now, I will say that I got the idea over here on this one, which is, um, uh, yeah, the, the Homelands Regional Spain one uh, for Luis, I believe how you, how you pronounce that name. Uh, I kind of looked at this and was like, okay, you know, this is interesting, but... I don't have access to all this stuff, so this is what I got access to so far. I know my sideboard's only got 13 cards, uh, so I'm looking for suggestions on that. Of course, with the ban list, there might be some things I have to change and add and take out. And uh, and this deck might be complete poopy after the ban list, I don't know. Uh, but just kind of going over uh, some of the differences. One, I have this SCR and not uh, the... Uh, he didn't play an SCR. Okay, well, I had the space. I threw this one in there. I mean, it's pretty, you know, pretty good to splash into anything. I mean, I know the Kai's a little bit better. Well, a lot better probably, but um, I play this at like <laughs> just about every deck now. I uh, just throw it like, well, I don't have an SCR. Her 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 Heroine's Lineage. Let's throw it in there. Uh, I am using the Vegeta uh, Unison. I think this is a pretty good finisher for Frieza, at least from one of the games I've played with previously. Uh, and then everything else is pretty much the same. Um, I would play more hits if I had access to more hits, but I only have two, and only one of them is mine. Um, so I think this is a pretty good card. So I'm not sure exactly. The only thing I can figure out right now because of the blue-yellow, what you do is uh, you play this universe, not a symbol. You get, like, this guy out, and then next turn you have this in hand, you charge it. Or if you need, like, some extra blocker, you can play this. It's also... Draws your card when it activates blockers, so that's, you know, a nice little combo. And then, of course, once this is in energy, because you have this, Senzu Bean becomes alive. So, um, that's really good. I think this is a one-of, it was in the other deck. Um, it's a hard cast three, from what I'm seeing, but I think that's a pretty good play. I know he's only have one, I'd probably sideboard another one like he is. Um, and then this card, I'm, I'm borrowing, but apparently this one's really good too. Choose up to one of your opponent's cards and switch to rest mode, or choose up to one of your opponent's car battle cards in rest mode. The energy cost of four, four or less and KO it. So it's good spot removal and uh, more rest mode stuff. Of course, the more cards you have to rest mode, the more you'll likely to get out uh, this guy right here. And again, I only have two. Uh, I'm sure I can probably borrow another one. I'm sure our play group has more of these, but um, maybe put this at three, but... I mean, it's pretty, like, decent right now, the way it is. Um, this card right here, the Violent Rush Bojack, I actually um, played. I've played a version of this Frieza uh, before, and I'm not really <laughs> I'm not a really good player to begin with, but um, this is definitely not really my style. I'm more of an aggro player, um, but this, at least from what I've discussed with some of my... Uh, you know, some of my uh, local uh, playmates. Playmates? Is that even, like, a good, like... That sounds... Playmates? Friends? Whatever. Um, they said this is more like the aggro version. Um, 
maybe, maybe it is. Um, my sideboard, you know, I know Nemesis isn't all that great. This used to be the bane of my existence, ex existence, but uh, I did sideboard that in. But this is pretty much the what I'm starting with. Haven't got to you know play it yet. Uh, I might be playing it at local Sunday. I already told my locals that here. I'm going to start getting prepped for it. So they're all kind of trying to help me because I need all the help I can get because I'm a terrible player. So so if you see me at a tournament and you and you do watch the videos, oh, yeah, you know, just say hi. I'm, I'm pretty easygoing. I like to talk to people. And, uh, oh, you, you suck. I'm like, ah, yeah, you right. I suck. <laughs> I'm bad. But I'm going to try to play this um, and see how it is. If you have any suggestions, uh, that would be great. Please help me <laughs> so, and see, you know, what I'm gonna try to test it out Sunday and you know get through some practice runs, but I know all this is you know all this could be just crap because the ban list I think is coming Friday, and I really think this is gonna get hit. I think Dark Power Black Mass Sane is just gonna be banned, and if this gets hit, which I think it has a very likelihood of getting hit, um, then this is just not. A thing anymore. You probably want to do the whole Frieza, Mecha Frieza stuff then, which is fine. I think uh, that would be fun to play. I don't know if it goes this, but you know. But yeah, your suggestions would be great. You know, uh, tell me some of your line of plays you see here. I'm seeing, uh, you know, some arrival obviously with here, going to this. Uh, this gives you free combo. You know, if you have a blue, blue yellow multicolor card in your energy, you reduce the combo cost, so it's like a free. And then when you play this card, you have to win your opponent's battle cards, plays the bombs on attack. I don't think it's really. I don't know if the people are actually like hard casting the four, this four drop. I think they're just playing it for more arrival power because you get you still because this deck in particular played two and three. I think he played. Oh, he might have played four. Yeah, he played four. But he's only arriving, arrival, arrival. It doesn't have arrival, does it? No. So I guess he's only using it as he's just really trying to get this Bojack out there, which is really, really good um, because of that uh, keyword. Of course, this is like, you know, I heard one of my uh, one of my uh, local players saying that this is just word vomit <laughs> or text vomit because it's got the, uh, the Aegis, which is, I think, a defensive step now. I think if I'm understanding that correctly, like, you know, no negates, no combos. Aegis activates, so when, you know, auto when this card activates, Aegis Blue Yell, which is untapped to energy and draw a card, you know, places a 20k beater out there, get him out there pretty easy with just one yellow, like, he's pretty good, pretty good card, from what I'm understanding, that's how he's played, uh, so, uh, but yeah, you know, this could just not matter <laughs> by Friday, it might just all be poopy, um, but with that being said, you know, a lot of people, or a couple of people in my play group, was like, you might just want to wait to the next set and see what's uh, worth investing. So let's kind of take a those, look at those leaders while I got your attention here and just kind of look here. These are the ones I pulled up. This is Trunks. Um, this is when this card is placed in your leader area. Activate uh, one forbidden, foreboding music box from your deck. Uh, the card deck draws a card. When your life is four or less, you may draw a card. So we have to one your engine to act mode. Put this card over. See the back, the back side here. Auto when this card text draws a card. Auto if your opponent turn if it's your opponent's turn. When one of your blue unison cards with a specified cost of three or more is removed from your unison area, you may add up to one add one tapion sword from your drop area to your hand. If you do, choose one card in your hand and discard it. Spirit boost one, you must remove a marker from your unison card activate this skill. This card gets plus five thousand power for the turn. If you have a blue using card with a specified cost of three or more in play, this card gains double strike. So I'm not seeing the line of play here. I'm not much of a blue player. I don't see me playing this personally. Is what it is. I feel like if someone's gonna play, if you're gonna play blue, it's probably still gonna be Soul Striker. But I mean I haven't seen never really paid attention to anything blue. I'm not a blue player. Haruta God. Okay. I don't when this card attacks, add up to one card from your life to your hand. Look up to top five cards from the top of your deck. Add up to one card among them to your hand and shuffle your deck. If you add a card from your hand, you choose one card in your hand and discard it. So you're still, so you're still get, you know, you're self awakening, and you don't have to show your opponent which card it is, which is really nice because it just add up to a card, so they don't have to like verify that it's a whatever card. So when your life is four or less, or you have one blue Minota card and one blue Tapion card in your drop area, you may draw one card, which is energy to switch up to energy in active mode, add a card from your life to your hand until you have five life left, and then flip this card over. So that can be easily done, I feel like, by turn two. Just 
discard a Minotia, discard a Tapion, rip Awaken. So, and then auto when this card attacks, draw a card. Auto once per turn when one of your blue battle cards activate an evolved skill from your hand, draw a card. And then uh, place two cards from under one of your blue or green battle cards in their owner's drop area. Place two cards from under, under one of your blue or green battle cards in their owner's drop area. Choose up to one card. One of your cards and gets plus 5,000 power for the battle. 5,000 power for the battle. So, this really wants you to play mainly blue. But, Harutagon's been a... People like playing Harutagon. I remember Harutagon Storm was a thing. I don't know if it's really going to be that. I mean, it is, it seems, on this side especially, very aggro. Um, and I guess, but once one of your blue battle cards evolves, so you don't get to do the green chain, but I guess there's a blue chain too. So... Um, which, which I mean, I think you can splash the blue and green together, really. I think I just, most of it's, I think, not color specified. So, I can see this deck being a thing. Just because Harutagon's popular. Uh, Sun Goku, another one. <laughs> this card deck, draw a card. If you have two or more energy, when a yellow battle card is revealed from the top of your deck, place it in your drop area and play, and play by this, that card's skill, you may flip this card over. If you do, draw one card, switch from to active mode, and add cards to your left hand to this five or left. So, very specific. <laughs> or you can just do the regular Awaken 2, which is draw 2. So, let's see back. It says 4. Card attack, draw 2 cards, choose one card from your hand and place on the top of your deck, and this card gets plus 5 power for the battle. I'm not a fan of just putting cards back on top of your deck unless there's a specific... Whatever. After one Android 18 Defender of Heroes... From your deck to your hand, shuffle your deck and choose one card in your hand and place it on the top of the deck and negate the skill for the game. So it'll just let you, like, if you want to finish the game or something, or this is like your finisher or whatever, go get it. That's it. Spirit Boost 1, reveal the top card of your deck and place it in your drop area. Okay, so there's cards that let you do it. So it's kind of like, okay, so I guess there's cards going to be in that deck that lets you look, place in the drop area and play. So that's interesting. Uh, that might be fun. I mean, anything that lets you play stuff for free is good it seems like that's where it's kind of going so anything that lets you play you know reduced or free cost that's good so yeah okay not something i'm interested in. now this guy right here i'm an android player i played the old android 17 and 18 deck with cell chain so i'm very super excited to see another android leader choose one android card in your hand and discard it when this card attacks draw two cards okay in your life is more or less or you have a yellow unison card with specified cost of two in play which there's a lot of them uh, you may draw one card, switch up to one of your energy to act mode, add cards from your life to your hand until you have six life six life left, and flip this card over. August, it says. Super 17. Misery of Hell? That's not right. Yes. Card attacks, draw a card, and this card gets plus 2,000 power for, for the battle for each card placed under your battle cards. Okay. Activate main. Once per turn, choose one Super 17 card in your bar battle area. Place up to one Hellfighter 17 or Android 17 card from your drop area under the chosen card. So there's going to be cards that suck, you know, Android stuff, just consuming them. Uh, so again, it boosts him every time that happens. So uh, Spirit Boost 1. Choose one Super 17 card in your battle area and place three cards under it in its orange drop area. Choose up to one of your opponent's... One of up to one each of your opponent's battle cards and unison cards and switch them to rest mode. Okay. Interesting. Kind of combats the unisons a little bit. I'll probably be trying to play this. I hope it's like really good. I haven't really paid attention to some of the cards, but I'm, I'm definitely going to be trying to play this one. Sin Shenron. Which is, this is super cool. It's got blocker. As a leader, it's got blocker. That's, that's neat. And I think it's on both sides. When you activate a Shadow Dragon extra card from your hand, you and your opponent place the top card of your decks in the drop areas. Choose one black Shadow Dragon card in your hand and discard it. When this card attacks, draw a card, then switch this card to active mode at the end of the turn. Like when you have when your life is four or less or seven or more black Shadow Dragon cards in your drop area, you may draw one card, switch up to one range to active mode and put this card over. So there's gonna be extra cards that Kind of work like Desire cards. So this card gains Desire, but those cards are going to be saying this card gains Shadow Dragon. Like an extra card. So that's interesting. Again, blocker on this side. 
When you activate a Shadow Dragon extra card from your hand, your opponent plays at the top card of their deck in their drop area. This card attacks, draw a card, and this card gets plus 5,000 power for the turn, and at the end of the turn, switch this card to active mode. Uh, shoot up to one Shadow Dragon extra card in your hand, and activate its active main battle skill without paying the energy cost. That's once per turn spirit boost, so... I think people love Sin Shinron stuff. This seems like a really neat mechanic with it having blocker and kind of a mill effect. That's really cool. This, I think people will play this. Now, there was another leader that I saw. It might not be in here yet. I'm just going to pick this unspecified leader. Uh, it's green. Is it in here yet? Well, Fidel. I saw this somewhere. I hope they I hope someone wasn't pulling my leg. Oh, it's not even in here yet. I saw a Fidel leader. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's real. <laughs> but if that's real, I'm definitely going to look at that one too. It works with the uh, skillless battle cards. So, anyways, uh, this is kind of the deck. You know, tell me what you think. Tell me if you think, you know, tell me what ratios you would play. Tell me, you know, what, how you feel about it. If you play a version like this, um, if somehow this reaches uh, Mr. Luis here or Miss Luis, who knows? I don't know. Um, let, I, I'd like to speak with him, you know, see what he, how he played the deck and see what it felt like to him, what, what the main goal of it was. You know, I, I'm guessing it's to tap energy down or rest mode stuff and, get these cards out when they have no option but to deal with it or you know whatever um let me know like comment share subscribe this will be the first of hopefully many decks i look at uh some of my other decks that i'm gonna look at is vajax uh, i played a lot during uh, last summer during the uh during the pandemic online so you know that'll be something i'll look at i know that's probably gonna get hit um, Sun Gohan Skillless Yellow. I think it actually looks a whole lot like this, anyways. You know, um, so that might be something that I look at. I have it mostly built. Um, as far as that, not a whole lot of other options at the moment. But uh, you know, I have a, I have a lot of stuff. You know, I don't I not have a good play group that's going to let me borrow some stuff. I have most of this. The main things I don't have personally are these. Uh, because I did not buy much of this set. Uh, this, and then I'm borrowing one of these, and then everything else I have that you see here. So, not too bad. Um, although I'd like one more of these and one more of these. Um, well, let me know what you think when you put your ratios at. Um, what cards would you take out? What cards would you add? You know, how do you play Frieza? I know there's a lot of Frieza players, Frieza players out there that probably know a whole lot more how to make this deck work better. So, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.